Hey everybody, welcome to Red Wings Rant, where tirades and impassioned pleads for your Detroit Red Wings finally have a home. We are finally watching some Red Wings hockey. I thought, why not have a little bit of fun and talk about uh, the game one of <laughs> the Prospect Tournament. I I had a lot of fun watching it. I, I know we're supposed to watch these and pull back tell ourselves not to get excited, but there are so many things to have fun with in this game. Um, <laughs> just to start, though, uh, let me remind you guys, um, I, I do I do want to turn this into something bigger, so if you guys do have the time, head on over to Apple Podcasts and find Red Wings Rant. Give it a subscribe, uh, rate, and review. Five stars uh, goes the longest way to help us. Of course, you're watching on YouTube, so uh, subscribing to the channel uh, helps us uh, get found. Of course, always set the notifications so you guys don't miss anything. If uh, I decide to do a surprise live and I want to hear from everybody and, and hear what you guys think, uh, make sure that everybody else had as much fun as I did because um, I, I don't want to feel alone here. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, those are the two best ways to help out uh, the brothers discussion and Red Wings rant. Uh, so if you guys do have the time, uh, again, like I said, those uh, ratings, the reviews, the subscriptions do us all the good. So let's have some fun, right? I, I said uh, I titled this. Let's uh, let's overthink it, right? Let's uh, let's have fun. Let's go too deep into our excitement because I only want to do this for a little bit. And uh, I, I was too jittery and and had too much fun watching Lucas Raymond and Bergren and uh, Tutayev. Holy shit! I hope uh, if anybody's watching. Uh, please, your your hot takes uh, of uh, whatever whatever happened tonight. Uh, those first two periods for Brad Strom, I'd, I'd have to say anything um, before that injury. Uh, the kid, um, he looked good. I know, I know, we had the one uh, post to post save that he had to get over and push himself, and uh, that that looked great. Um, but having some discussions on on Twitter, I think clearly post injury, that's where uh, things started to break down for Brad Strom. So. I, I'm going to judge him pre-injury. I'm going to say, uh, and again, based on uh, some conversations on Twitter, I'm going to give the nod uh, to Katie Lady. If you guys want to go find her, could be Katie Lady, uh, but uh, find her on Twitter. She she's the one that was smart enough to say, you know what, this is probably all conditioning. This is first game, kind of, you know, going uh, post to post and trying to make those saves. And also, Bradstrom was was pretty mobile uh, in that too. So. Uh, I, I, I would say that's probably what's going on here. I don't know if we have to worry too much, but uh, a little bit of a um, little bit of liquids and uh, some good stretching and we'll probably see Bradstrom again. But uh, yeah, I, again, pre pre going down. That's, that's how I'm going to judge him here. Uh, Tristan, glad to see you're here. Uh, Tareel, <laughs> Kareel Tutayev goes, Burr! Um, <laughs> I love this too. Absolutely disgusting goal he had on his second now Tristan tell me this uh everybody was calling him the little Russian clearly uh somebody got to him and told him that because that that second goal was not scored by a little Russian that was a kid who was like I'm gonna I'm gonna head to the crease like I'm six foot six like I'm Victor Hedman size and <laughs> just destroying here I god I I love that goal that was that was fantastic. I, I really thought um, I, I, if you if you came away from this and were impressed with just uh, if you had to pick somebody you were most impressed with, I, I'm not going to be mad at you for picking Tutayev in any way, shape, or form. There, there, are, you know, folks uh, on social media who are trying to bring us all down and, and tell us, uh, you know, it's just a prospect tournament. But I mean, these kids got to stand out. And I bring it up all the time on the podcast and I brought it up on the last episode with like Giovanni Smith. And, um, you know, you, you look at his points per 60 and you go, well, you're not going to, you're not going to judge Giovanni Smith by his points per 60 because that's not why he's on a team. But what you do is you say he had all that ice time and he took advantage of it and he used it and tried to stay on the teams, keep a roster spot, keep making the big bucks instead of that minor league hockey money. That's what's important. And Tutayev today came in and, you know, joking aside about how small he is, um, I, I like some of the thoughts on Twitter where, you know, we haven't seen him yet. Nobody's seen him. He's just come out of nowhere. And and for him to do this and to kind of have a coming out party, I, I think is, is fantastic. Um, 
Jonathan, thank you for, for giving me uh, the top players. Pearson, Bratstrom, Bergeron, Felano, Raymond. I I like this list, Jonathan. I, I oh you got to, you got two to six. Um I again solid list here. I, I really liked Pearson's uh first period. I, I thought he looked super solid. Uh, Bratstrom again, like I said, solid before uh, that injury, and that really seemed to take him out. Uh Bergeron's the one though I haven't really mentioned yet. And I I for me, I, I tweeted out um just a little bit ago, he's he looks fantastic in any spot on the ice, right? He looks completely aware of what's going on. And uh, I think one of the things like would be super reasonable for us to kind of hold back or pull back on Bergeron with this amazing performance in the SHL last year is transitioning to North America. And I just, I think the point of me saying that wherever he was on the ice, he looked like he was where... He was supposed to be is at least at least to the the notion that he has to make that major adjustment from two different games and the size of the game as well. I I think that just says that that he's transitioned. Uh, I guess whatever the preparation was to get going, it didn't. He didn't have to like knock any rust off, right? I don't want to say after one prospect tournament game, but of course, like I said, this this little recording is titled "Let's Overthink It." Um, but I, you know, you don't want to say after one prospect tournament game that this guy uh, looks like a Hall of Famer or anything like that. But with the little things and the fact that he was uh, creating his turnovers, he was creating some amazing passing plays. Uh, again, completely aware where everybody was on the ice. The things that you could have been worried about with Bergeron and transitioning his game over here, I just, it didn't feel like a thing. It felt like everything looked pretty solid. And um, I, I guess, point being, and I wish, God, I wish I could get you guys in on here so I wasn't just talking to the camera because I keep trying to look over at the comments, making sure I'm not missing anything. But um, yeah, I guess just now that you're forced to hear my thoughts, I this this is the final thought on, on Bergeron. I, if we were worried about what that transition would look like, and he plays like this for another couple of games and looks pretty well through training camp and in preseason, and it looks like this, how do you keep him off the opening night roster? I mean, that's that's where I'm at right now. I already pegged him as um, not a not a lock for the opening night roster, but was going to be one of our bubble guys, the strong consideration. And um, you know, I there, there's it's not like this team is uh is supposed to be sniffing the playoffs this year so there's a lot of space for him to fit i i just uh i'm i'm really happy with what i saw out of bergeron um now i gotta throw out there too tristan's bringing up wyatt new power uh tristan was the one who got me excited about wyatt new power so i'm glad you're bringing him up <laughs> i said uh, my cold take uh for wyatt after this game ended is that he is going to absolutely 100% and the a cold take again, he will be the fan favorite in Grand Rapids, or if he does make the team in Detroit, he will absolutely be a guy that people are going to be, I, you know, uh, we give, we give a lot of flack <laughs> to the Darren Helm fans out there, but there's going to need to be a replacement, right? For the Darren Helm fans. They're going to need a new helm to root for. Um, not to say that, you know, uh, uh, you say that making fun of the Darren Helm fans, um, I, I think Wyatt obviously is not going to be in that same vein, uh, where we're looking back at the good old days and that's why we still loved Darren Helm. But I, I just mean, there's going to be some place for them where they need to hang their hat. And I absolutely 1000% think, uh, one because of the name, but two, uh, the fisticuffs, man. Wyatt knows his size. Uh, he's a young kid trying to make a name for himself. And go check out our Wyatt New Power episode uh, just a couple weeks ago if you guys want to hear a little bit more about his background, get to learn a little bit more about Mr. New Power. But uh, I think he knows his size, and I think he wants to to make his presence felt. And I think with a guy like that and, you know, like, like I said, with, with the youth and the size, that, that's something where he's going to stand out first is uh is trying to use the body and uh be um gosh I'm, I'm losing the word i've been searching for the word for a second here and i've been rambling trying to find it but he needs to intimidate 
that's what he needs to go out there and do. And I, I, that's where I think he's going to land as a fan favorite. And uh, when I'm going over to Grand Rapids, uh, checking out some games this year, it's going to be really hard for me uh, to see the boy skating around and, and possibly the blue, possibly the red, but not going straight over to the pro shop and picking up a new power jersey. Like, <laughs> I just, I'm jumping out of my seat in a prospect tournament game because he's he's laying fools out. In a prospect tournament game, he's got me on my seat. Come on. All right. Um, where are we at here? Um, Sabrango was a surprise for me. Uh, this is coming from a silver 3344. Uh, no wonder he stays in the AHL. How about, how about him being, uh, the first guy from, uh, last year's draft class to get a contract and be playing in the AHL stays around the whole season. You know, we had a, we had an episode kind of focus around, uh, Sabrango as well. And we just, we can't get enough about what the coaches are saying about Sabrango. And then to see it tonight too, kind of play out in front of us was, was fun because I'll, I'll be honest, it wasn't anything where I've, I've been watching a ton of tape of, uh, of Donovan Sabrango. The most video I've seen was him actually getting uh, the notification that he had been drafted by uh, the Detroit Red Wings. That was, that was the first time I'd seen any film on him uh, on the draft day, but to kind of wrap up what the coaches had been saying about Sabrango, it wasn't necessarily anything too focused or uh, I, it wasn't about what he was going to do with his stick. It wasn't going to be about offensive, defensive play. It was about his desire to learn. And I think that's where seeing him play the way he did in the prospect tournament um, and, and the fact that he did look so solid, I think, defensively. I don't want to, I don't want to put two capital S O on that. Uh, so solid. Uh, but he, you know, he didn't hurt us. Uh, Sabrango, I thought came to play and for a kid, his age, and especially where we picked him up in the draft and, uh, I, you got to fall in love with the attitude. I mean, if his coaches are interviewing, uh, you know, with elite prospects and, you know, with NHL.com and their favorite thing about him is that he comes to them to learn more about how he can get better. Uh, that that's an incredible, that's a tool in itself. And, uh, like I said, there, there's more to love about Sabrango. There's more we're going to see in these next couple of games. Uh, I'm sure of it. Uh, but you can't be disappointed with what you saw, uh, tonight. Um, I, we've got some goner here, uh, on our Twitch channel. If you guys aren't over there yet, uh, he wants to know if there will be beer, uh, in Grand Rapids, certainly. But um, like I said, I didn't want to go too long on this. I hope I hope you guys all had uh, fun watching this game. I uh, I did. Gosh, I wish I could bring this up real quick here. Just give me a sec, because if you guys hadn't seen it yet, and I'm guessing some people are going to uh, rather just go on over to the Detroit Red Wings YouTube page. But um, let, let's take a look at that uh, Bergman and Raymond uh, first goal, because I I'm so mad at myself. I. I, I know all you have to do right now is say, man, you're full of shit. Um, but right before this happened, uh, I'm on the YouTube channel and I, I'm ready to type in Raymond's going to score on this first shift and shut everybody up. And it was because, you know, it, it, he didn't have a bad first period, but it wasn't like you weren't going to call home and, and tell mom about it. But um, yeah, I mean, if we bring this up here, well, there we go. There's the start of the replay. And this is where I'm talking about Bergren, his on ice awareness. I mean, this, this isn't anything where we're going to look at this play, you know, and say, this is the beginning of Lucas Raymond, but this first of all starts as a solid, uh, entry for, uh, for Bergren and to know that, uh, Lucas is, is where he needs to be. And to think, uh, how many practices have these guys had together wearing red? Yeah, e exactly. That's why I, I love this idea that Bergeron is making his transition from the SHL. And this, this isn't like a huge struggle to set up this play. And I, I think the most important thing here as we scroll through this is that this did look so incredibly easy. Uh, suffice to say, I mean, if you're not watching this and thinking to yourself, wow, 2002, uh, Datsuk to Brett Hull, jokingly, but if you didn't have that thought, I mean, come on, are, are you even a Red Wings fan at this point? But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if we just let that sucker play through, absolutely beautiful rip there uh, at the end from from Lucas. And I, if you didn't fall in love at that point, I mean, 
Yeah, with the smile. If you didn't fall in love with Lucas Raymond's smile before that, I, I don't know what your problem is. Uh, but that that was a beaut. Um, you know, I did I did want to see too if we could pull up uh, that Tutayev goal. Uh, let me see if uh, how long this is going to take me to to find on here. But that was another beauty. As I was just talking with Tristan a, a second ago. Um, and oh, good, tr good transition there, Tristan. Uh, super hyped about Tutayev. Uh, such a smart player. The Wings honestly gelled way better than the Stars did. Uh, you could see it in the passing. And I, I, I love that comment too because I know like the major uh, issue would be the la the second half of that third period. But I, I got to tell you guys, especially with the uh, the goal that seemed to bounce off Bradstrom's glove. I wouldn't be surprised if with that injury, he's got a pinch and I tweeted this out that this is something pulling him out of the game as this is going on. Uh, because that, that just didn't look like the first 75% of that game. That, that is not how Bradstrom looked. And that it really just kind of, I, I would say balloon, uh, maybe not ballooned on him, but uh, it really got out of hand uh, fast. If we could steal from, uh, from Anchorman uh, for a second here, but yeah, um, I, I feel like that that right there is something to point to is that this this really could have been a game that looked way out of hand. And just because of that injury again, and that's that's where I'm landing right now with Bradstrom is, is why this did look closer than um the than really I, I was pegging it. But here we go. Um I, I think uh with how much trouble I'm having right now pulling all these up, this will probably be the last replay I pull up. <laughs> Here's uh here's the thrill. The thrill, of course, being uh Kirill Tutayev. Uh coming in hot. And this is what we were talking about right at the start of the recording here was that uh Kirill got notice of how many people were calling him the small Russian. Uh because this is all about the body. And and if this kid uh is is really going in like this, and I think we had Horkoff uh talking about it before. Uh, this game started, uh, if you guys watch the, the feed on YouTube, Karel's the guy that he was most excited about. Um, and of course, Horkoff, uh, on the scouting team director, uh, he, he, he couldn't, he couldn't stop talking about Kirill. And it was kind of one of those things where it was like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to look out for a guy who's fast and, you know, you're going to look for a guy who's, who's not making a ton of mistakes because that's, that's where Horkoff's head was at. But I, I, it, you know, it would probably behoove Horkoff to go into those interviews and say, yeah, watch out for Kirill because uh, he's going to get pissed off somewhere in the second period and just completely use his five foot nine body to earn his own, <laughs> to earn a goal. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm probably slowing this down too much here, uh, as I said before. But I mean, look at this kid, man. If if you're not excited about this after one game, and like I said, I, I do want this to be sort of short. Uh, I'm glad that you guys are uh, glad that you guys are, are here commenting here because I got I got another comment from from Jonathan. Thoughts on whether Bradstrom should have left the ice after the minor injury? I absolutely and I said this uh, on Twitter. You guys can follow us at BOD Hockey. Um, I absolutely don't understand why he wasn't taken out considering um, that this is just the prospect tournament. And, and I think, you know, we saw Bradstrom finish the game. So a minor injury is uh, pegging it pretty well, but we've got Sebastian Kosa waiting on the bench. And I, I as much as we were excited for Bradstrom's 75% uh, in that game, I think we were much more excited to see Sebastian Kosa. And, uh, you know, it does make sense that he doesn't go in starting the first game of this prospect tournament for the Red Wings, but uh, test him out. I don't know uh, if, if that was sort of like, a, you know, a, a protective decision, um, by the Red Wings coaching staff to make sure Kosa, you know, really was absorbing the game from where he was sitting. Um, I, I could eat that up, I guess, but um, consider, I mean, for, for Bradstrom's safety is kind of where my head's at is you do have somebody that nobody's going to argue if you put him in and I'm pointing at Sebastian Kosa, who's obviously right behind me. Uh, nobody's going to argue that we're all going to be more excited. Uh, and uh, if anything, again, keep Bradstrom a little bit safer. If he's, got to if he's pulling something or there's there's some sort of pinch going on in a bad area and it's game 1 and it's a prospect tournament just get him out of there give him some water 
massage it, stretch it, get him feeling better, put him in the next game. But I, yeah, to, to me, uh, that is probably the best question I think anybody could throw out there, Jonathan. I, I completely agree. If if you were leading the witness, um, that Bradstrom probably should have just come out for safety's sake. Um, soap dish, nine ninety nine, best player on the ice was Pearson. I was absolutely ready to say that after the first period. Uh, Silver, thirty three forty four. I'd argue it'd be a toss up between Pearson and Valeno. I again, I I was floored with Bergeron. Um, I know, I know. Again, uh, I'm really floored with it just by the sake of him making that transition, and we were super, I, I guess, cautious to get too excited about him coming over because he does have to make that transition to the the North American game. But I I was just super impressed with the fact that when he was on the ice, he never looked lost. He knew where he needed to be. He was completely aware of everybody which you, again, would say would be one of the major uh, obstacles for a player making that transition. It, it's not like he's going to forget how to skate. He will remember how to shoot. He will remember how to pass. But he's got to know where everybody is. He's got to know that he can make the shot. He's got to know that those guys are there to get the pass. They got to know that he's got to know that they're open for the pass. He's got to know that he can make those zone entries and have the space to throw it over to Lucas Raymond. And none of that seemed like an issue for him. So, like I said earlier, I, I'm, I'm again, I, I might look like a doofus, uh, you know, after the second prospect game, and uh, you know, he turns the puck over 18 times and uh, falls flat on his face, gets an own goal, and uh, you know, I look like an idiot. But I, I'm sitting here right now, I'm ready to go. Bergeron in the lineup, fired up, and especially on the power play. Holy crap! How terrible has our power play been for a couple of years? I'd probably just put Lucas Raymond on the team just to make this power play look better. Uh, all right. What do we got here? Um, KT79 dominated. We've got Soap Dish back. Chase was better defensively. He was physical, played both uh, special teams. Uh it's good in the dot and had at least two points. Yeah, I, you can't argue with Chase. Um, absolutely. Uh, I, I did actually see on um, Ice Hockey Gifts, if you guys are following them on Twitter. I mean, if you're watching this, there's you're probably 100% of the people watching this are, have already been following Ice Hockey Gifts. Uh, they did point out that uh, Bergeron did not play on the penalty kill. And I know you're talking about Chase, and here I am transitioning into Bergeron. Sorry about that. So um, dish, <laughs> but Bergeron was actually playing on the PK. Didn't play on the PK over in the SHL. Kind of, a, uh, kind of interesting there. Putting him in there could be uh, a tell to how I don't know. I was about to say short staffed, but I guess it's just because of how many restaurants I've been going to recently. Um, but <laughs> uh, under skilled they are uh, roster wise, and you just want to put your high skilled guys probably in, in special teams when it comes to this prospect tournament, but. Um, yeah, to bring it back around to Chase, um, like I said, uh, and and another thing too is I, I did have Chase penned in. Uh, I wasn't going to say penciled in. I had him penned in to my roster for the upcoming season. So it was, it was one of those things with uh, Chase Pearson and uh, Joe Valeno. And I see Chase as, as sort of uh, on that on that bubble on the fringe, uh, get some games, not necessarily starting, uh you know, from game one, but he, he's going to be one of the skaters that's uh, probably watching from the press box for most of the season or most of the start of the season, but could certainly earn his way in there. Uh, but that was another guy where for Chase, I was excited to just see him play a solid game. And the same thing with Joe Valeno, uh, because I, I do just see them as Detroit Red Wings at this point. I, I think Chase deserves that opportunity uh, sitting in Grand Rapids for as long as he has. Um you know, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago with Chase. I mean, this is this is a kid that exists uh, because the Atlanta Thrashers were a hockey team, right? Like uh, we always make, uh, we make fun of the, uh, the Arizona Coyotes. Like, what are we doing in Arizona? Uh, of course, the Thrashers used to be that team, but Chase wouldn't be a hockey player if it wasn't for the Atlanta Thrashers and him growing up as a fan. So just for that sake alone, I want to see this come to fruition so that we have a kid from Atlanta from the Thrasher's fandom, so to speak, become an NHLer. Something has to come from that. And if the entire Atlanta Thrasher's franchise only exists 
so that we can get Chase Pearson and the Detroit Red Wings for a game. Isn't it all worth it? Yeah. Right, uh, joking aside, um, yeah, and, and here we are, uh, both great regardless. I uh, felt like tonight Chase was noticeable in every facet of the game. Uh, Joe is also quieter out there. Not a bad way, just not flashy. And, um, you know, that that's actually a great point to bring up there, Soap Dish, because I, I I would probably have told you before. Uh, that was uh, something I'm standing on. I didn't just rip ass right there. Um, <laughs> probably didn't even get picked up on the mic. I would have said Valeno's game would be quieter. So I, I think if, if this is something where we're seeing Valeno play like Valeno and uh, there's no stakes uh, and, and to say he plays a quiet game and still scores a goal again, he, sh he probably should be in a prospect tournament, right? Um, it's that's gravy for me. You want, you want to see him in mid season form. So I, I, I and like you said there, you're not saying it in a bad way. I, so I absolutely think that's a great thing to point out because Joe Valeno is playing Joe Valeno hockey. Um, uh, and for any hockey player that's out there, any sport, um, you know what, any, any job, if you're not doing you, uh, that that's where the failings start to happen. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know if I want to start, uh, being Mr. Philosopher here, but yeah, I, the second that you start to try to do somebody else's game, and if we bring it back to hockey, uh, you know, you're letting somebody else control what your strategy should be, what your game plan was going in, and these coaches are fully aware of what Joe Valeno does best and how he looks his best. So when you see Joe Valeno being Joe Valeno, I guess the final point is um, thumbs up all around. Okay, um, I got to go. I still got a little guy that um, I got to make sure he gets to bed because he just woke. He slept through the entire Red Wings game. What a little saint. Uh, let me watch the whole thing. And uh, now he's been up and down. I can hear him. So, um, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be going live um, uh, hopefully Sunday morning to talk about uh, the next prospect game. I'll be live with my brother. And then, uh, yeah, that's our regular schedule. And like I mentioned earlier, if you guys got, uh, guys could go to Apple Podcasts, give us the uh, subscription, rate, and review if you are using <laughs> Apple Podcasts. I feel like that's a problem I keep running into. Uh, that helps us out uh, on the podcast side. Here on YouTube, just go ahead and give us a subscription. Uh, same game on Twitch. And um, shoot, uh, I enjoyed uh, having this conversation. I hope, uh, I hope I can see you guys. Like I said, we're going to be at the Red Wings game. Uh, on October 14th. So if you guys find us, because I'm going to try and wear a Red Wings rant t-shirt, I'm going to have some t-shirts to hand out um, just for funsies. And uh, yeah, come find us. I hope you guys will be there. It'll be fun to meet some folks. Uh, we'll probably be out in the Chevy, I don't know, fan thing, whatever it's called. And then of course, going inside. Uh, <laughs> to, what a dumb shit. Uh, we'll be inside watching the game. Yeah, no fuck. Um, Jesus. All right. It's clearly it's time for me to go to bed. Thanks for tuning in guys. We'll see you Sunday morning. This was a blast. Uh, and hopefully we can do more post game stuff because, uh, I like getting your input. This is fun. All right. Have a good one guys.